Hey all, Tom Welly here from ForexReviews.info. I hope you're having a great day. This is a follow-up video to that weekly trend trading strategy I revealed to you guys the other day. Basically in this video, what I'm going to show you is, in that video I promised you guys that I would show you how you can actually trade the weekly um, by looking for pullbacks to, to go in that direction of that trend. Because, like a lot of people keep asking me over and over and over again is, it's great to trade the weekly, but it's the, the the stops would have to be massive. Now I'm going to show you they don't have to be that big. Let me just first off mark in all the signals as I mentioned in the previous video. What to look for? You're looking for three or four candles in one direction and then an opposing candle, and that marks new trends as they form. Now engulfing signals do not need extra confluence. They work by themselves. They're a great price action candle, and I've mentioned them many times before on my blog at forexreviews.info. So, let me just mark in all the qualified signals here, here, okay, so there's some recent qualified, you know, trend changing candles on the weekly chart, this is just on the Euro US weekly, and basically put, you know, these candles are very, very powerful because it means for over a week that that change in the market has happened and they've taken over the market. And often what happens is after a weekly engulfing candle, the market will go in that direction of the trend for a while. After another weekly engulfing candle, the market will go in that direction of the trend again. And sell candle, trend down, trend up, trend down, trend up. And as you can see, we might be about to go into another, we might be about to go back into another downtrend. If this candle closes below this low down here somewhere. And a downtrend here. Okay, so let me get into it. Basically put, how do we trade this? Because a lot of people say, okay, well, we can trade it, but the stop would have to be massive. Now, yeah, you're right. If you're going to trade straight off directly off the weekly, your stop would be quite big. But there's another way of doing it. Okay, so what I've done just now is I've highlighted... I'll just highlight it properly. I've highlighted just that weekly candle. This recent weekly candle, this bullish weekly candle, right? So now I'm going to drop back to the daily. I'll just find that candle. Okay, so that's what the candle looked like on the daily chart. <clears throat> and that's where it closed, just around here. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down to the H4. Okay, we'll just find it on the H4. Just bear with me a second, guys. So we're dropping back down. We, we still got the weekly bias that from that candle. It was bullish. Okay, I've just lost where we're up to. Just bear with me. Okay, so here it is. Okay, so this is the weekly engulfing. It started around here, the weekly, just around here, and then it came closed up here in this area. So now we're on the four, four hour. What you can do is you can just, let me zoom in a bit, you can just wait for nice pullbacks and price action to buy into. Like, have you ever heard the saying buying in dips? Basically, that's it. You buy in the dip, you place your stop below the previous low. Okay, now as you can see, this is the weekly low. So if one bought here and they place their stop below here, that's like them placing a stop below the weekly candle. Okay? So if one bought here on this price action signal, or this one here, right, and you place your stop below here, okay, you're you're pulling your your you're buying as the market is moving in your direction. And as we know, this is an uptrend. Okay, by the weekly close, it was a weekly bullish engulfing close. So now we're looking for either pullbacks to get in and keep buying into the trend, or looking for a good, nice couple of pullbacks at the beginning and then just holding on to those trades. Now, you can use Fibonacci tools to get in on retracements to do this, and that's perfectly what the Fibonacci tool is designed for. You can use it like that. As you can see, this bounced around between the 38.2 and the 50%. And then the next one, this is the H4 chart, by the way, guys, if you're wondering. This one bounced around between the 50 and the 61.8. And so you'll be looking for bullish signals around here. And you place your stop below the low, you can do that. Okay, so basically, like the concept I said, buying in dips and, yeah, or selling at highs when it's a bearish trend. Okay, so basically, this that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is you can drop down to the one-hour chart. Okay. 
So now that you're on the one hour chart, you're looking at this price action. Now the weekly ended, it actually did not end here, it ended just here. In this spot here. Alright, so that's where the weekly ended, just around there, okay? I'm just looking at the dates. Okay, so okay, so now that we're on the, the daily chart, right? We can we can use another tool, okay, which is called Bollinger Bands. Okay? Okay, so yes it is an indicator, but we're using this indicator with price action just to know, like just, just some basic rules just to know where to get in on pullbacks, okay? It, it's just a it's simple little guide. So what you're doing is you're just waiting for price. Okay, so you've got a bull trend here, right? Caused by the the bullish engulfing on the weekly. So from when this closed around here, you're just waiting for pullbacks to hit. This is one method you can just wait for pullbacks to hit the the bottom Bollinger band, pierce it, and then you enter after good price action. Okay. Now where you place your stop, you just place it below the previous low. So it could be just here. You give it a little bit of extra room to breathe, okay, because this is a trend, okay, and so, or if you wanted to put your stop and have a, a less conservative stop, you could place your stop below the weekly low, which means that the trend has changed. Okay, so as you as you go along, let's just go through this. Okay, so that was one opportunity, one pullback, right? We had a nice pullback, bit of price action. Second pullback, price action, yeah? Okay, as the market moves up higher, let me just pull this chart out. The market moved up. Now the whole idea is you want to hold on to the first few trades as long as possible. So lock, locking in is a really good idea. So as the market moves up here, moves up here, we didn't get a pullback here. So we're just waiting, 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 waiting. We, we did get a pullback here. Right? Pierce the bottom of the Bollinger Band, bounced up. A good buy would be above this previous pin that went out of the around this area here. And like I said, because see how that's like there, you want to put your stop below the previous low. The previous low was either here, okay, we had a bit of a pull down here, or here. Okay, and either one's fine. And here, see that low is a little bit higher, so you want to place your stop below the previous low, which is either here or here. Okay, so that's another two trades there. Okay, so we didn't get any pullbacks here. So you want to be conservative, you want to hold on to these trades as long as possible. Uh, we did get a bit, good bit of price action just here as it broke above. And like I said, if you want to be less conservative, you can just go for the top of the, the Bollinger Band sort of area to take, pro, to, to, uh, to take profit. Okay, so we didn't get a full move down here. We did here, which wasn't perfect price action. You didn't get good price action until it broke above around here somewhere. Okay, so that was, you know, if you decide to enter that, that's not the perfect signal, so you can choose to enter that or not. This one here was good price action. You see it was bigger than the previous candle, pierced it nicely, and the price went up. Okay, here's another one. Right here, price pierced here. It was almost like a pin bar. Price went up. Okay, this one's not perfect. The second candle is really good though. This one was not perfect because it didn't really pierce it. This one's really great. Broke this previous bearish candle and away it went up higher and then eventually touched the top. Now this one's not perfect because it's not the same size. So you can you can just sort like that. That's one where you'd probably step it, keep out of. This one's good, and the reason it's good is it's, it's it's a good pin bar. Okay, now you put your stop either below this low, which is a little bit lower, or yeah, that's basically it. You can put your stop below there. You could put it below this previous low, but that's a bit too far away. And for risk reward, that's a bit too much. And as you can see, you didn't need it. Okay, so this was a good price action signal. Now you could have entered just beyond this candle area here, when the market was up about here. And as you can see, it rocketed up. Okay, so here's another price action pin bar right here. And as you can see, the market didn't do as well as you'd hoped. However, 
your stop would not be below this one, your stop would not be below this one, you'd have to use the, the, the closest low to you, and that's probably here. So the stop was still fine, stop, so that means the stop was down about here. Okay, this is a good signal here. Okay, did meander up a bit, then came back, and then rocketed up. Here's another bull signal here. Okay, now you put your stop below this previous low, which is right here. Okay, so on this one here, okay, so you didn't touch the bottom, so you stay out of that one. This one's a great one. Beautiful pin bar entry. Nice pullback. Oop, wrong candle. Okay, so there you go. Okay, so that's a nice little pullback pushes into the Bollinger Band, bounces back up. Now the reason the Bollinger Bands work so well is they tend to show the bottom of the Bollinger Band is around the 61.8 and the 51.50% 50 on the Fibonacci. They're very good at showing where that most likely is going to happen on as the trend's moving up and down. And as you can see, we didn't get any other pullbacks here. Um, we did get a pullback here, but as you can see, that's not a good price action signal to enter. None of these candles closed above here. The market kept moving down. No, this is not a very good signal. There's nothing to compare it, nothing to compare them to. That one was not bad. Yeah. And so you would put your stop below this previous low if you entered there. But as you can see, the market didn't go higher. I like to, after a signal, to see the market go a little bit higher, then I jump on. The market didn't go higher. This one here, so it depends on how you traded that. This one here is a good signal, and the market did go higher, and then it did go higher. So as you can see, like I said, is if we break this this low here, which is like one. Low, well, not really a low there, but this is one major low on the weekly and another one down here around 32.50. If we break both of them, then this would most likely mean a weekly bearish trend change on this pair on the Euro US. So that's something to watch out for. Okay, so now that I've done all these, let's have a look at the chart. I'll just pull it back. Okay, so basically this shows you we had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 excellent signals. As you can see, none of them were losers. Had 15 successful trades in a row, and it was just simply because we we used the bias of the weekly chart to make our decision, and then we used the, the pullback um, benefits of being able to see uh, waiting for the decent pullback on with with using the Bollinger Bands, and like I said, you could still you could use a, a Fibonacci as well. That's going to work just as good. Um, however, the Bollinger Bands make it a little little bit easier just to to know where to get in on a pullback. Waiting for price action on all these. Like I said, there was a couple that we didn't take because the price action just didn't look good enough. But as you can see, most of them basically went straight to target straight away. And as I said, these first few these first few trades on the on the trend change from this bullish engulfing on the weekly. These are the first few trades are the ones that you tend to want to hold on to and so after two or three trades that you're holding on to, these other trades you can just use to just take small that to take the small amount of profit from the market. Like as an example, this one here to here, 57 pips. This one here to here, 48 pips. This one here to the top here, 36 pips. And this one here to you know, around here, maybe 43 pips. And you can just keep doing that with these other trades and you just keep these ones locked in and you just keep pulling your stop up below the low of the Bollinger Band as the market produces more and more lows until eventually one of those lows be broken. So you basically, if you'd had opened up these beginning trades on the one hour here, following this strategy, you would have your stop here now on those trades. Okay, so you would have locked in, let me just zoom out a little bit more. So these first two, two or three trades, you would have locked in on this trade, you would have locked in around just over 200 pips on this one, just over 200 pips as well, and on like, let's say you locked in another one like this one, you would have 150 pips on that one. And if you did that lock in one more, which is a fourth time, that's not very, it's very rare for me. I usually only locked in about two or three trades maximum, um, 166 pips. But as you can see, you followed the trend and the trend was your friend in this case. And this happens time and time again, guys. Um, it doesn't happen, it, it's not 100% every single time. Like I said, the weekly engulfings are about 80% or just over 80%. Uh, I got an average of about 83% when doing back testing. So 
you do your own back testing, you do your own testing, test out this strategy yourself, and yeah, enjoy. Okay, thanks for watching guys, and have a good rest of the day.